Electric cars are going to hit half of Europe's new car sales much sooner than expected, says a new report. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. A new study says the uptake of electric cars in the US will be delayed by legislative uncertainty, import tariffs, and of course, um, a lot, of, a lot of negative publicity from the Trump administration and certain parts of the political spectrum. However, EV sales will keep rising in the US and Europe with China staying ahead. In Europe, battery electric cars could top half of all new car sales by 2032. EVs in the US won't reach 50% market share until around 2039, according to the report. In other words, the US is at least seven years behind Europe but probably more like mm, probably more like about 12 to 13 years behind China. China is pulling further ahead of the United States and Europe in the race toward EVs, with a new study revealing how quickly vehicle fleets are expected to transition to electric cars. While the United States and Europe are moving in the same direction, their pace is much, much slower, unfortunately. In a report published this week, EY, one of the world's largest professional services and consulting firms forecasts light vehicle sales through 2050 across the three major regions. It looks at China, Europe, and the US and predicts what will happen based on what's happening today. I don't actually agree with all the report. I'm curious to know what you guys think, but it is interesting. One key takeaway is that in Europe, EV sales will surpass those of gasoline and diesel vehicles by 2028. So, I mean, what, two and a half years, or less than two and a half years. The shift will accelerate from there, with electric cars projected to take half of all vehicle sales in Europe by 2032, or potentially by 2031. Now, of course, currently, the European Union has a ban on internal combustion vehicles in 2035, meaning in theory, they should be 100% by 2035. The study noted that until 2030, hybrids, including plug-in hybrids, will continue to outsell EVs in Europe until 2030. But as CO2 regulations become stricter and more affordable pure electric cars hit the market with faster charging speeds, more range, plus there's more superchargers being built, they'll outsell hybrids as well. The near to midterm future will feature a diverse mix of powertrains, shaped by regulatory shifts, tariffs, and involving consumer behavior, said Constantine M. Gall, EY Global Aerospace Defense and Mobility Leader. What's clear is that e-mobility will remain central to the future of transportation. Compared to Europe, the switch to EVs in the United States will be much slower, which is obvious. EY forecasts a brief surge in sales this month, September, ahead of the expiration of federal EV tax credits, but the long-term outlook is pitiful. In an earlier projection, EVs were expected to reach 50% of US light vehicle sales by 2034. 50% by 2034. That milestone has now been basically annihilated. They're now putting that, pushing that out to 2039. With factors such as policy uncertainty, import tariffs, and the loss of incentives slowing adoption. Now, China is already at 50%. Well, actually, technically that's not true. About 55% if you include plug-in hybrids. China will hit 50% EVs, likely in 2026 or 2027. 50% fully electric, I'm saying. So hybrids in the US will fill the gap. Plug-in hybrids, uh, maybe even e-revs. Obviously, Ram are building their own pickup truck. It's an e-rev their share of the US market could climb to a peak of 34% by 2034 before giving way to wider EV adoption, says the study. But looking at China, like I said before, things are very different. The shift there is happening much faster this year. The combined sales of battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids in the country will be around 55% by the end of the year, maybe even higher. And they'll surge past 90% by 2034. Now, I believe they'll hit 90% by 2030. I believe uh, it's going to happen well before 2034. EV sales alone are only expected to account for 50% of light vehicle sales by 2033, a year behind Europe, according to the projections. 
showing how important plug-in hybrids will remain in the country over the next decade, according to this study. Now, this is where I think this study is completely wrong. Plug-in hybrid sales in China over the last two months, and the most recent data is the most relevant data, have declined significantly, particularly BYD. Their sales have fallen by 23%. And if you look at the numbers of all new energy vehicles, 64, 60, I think 65% are fully electric. Plug-in hybrids actually only make up 25%. So EVs outsell plug-in hybrids by two and a half to one. It's a massive difference. The EV transition is advancing, but unevenly, said Constantine. The US faces policy uncertainty, high costs, and infrastructure gaps. Europe is on a steady recovery path under strict emissions targets. China benefits from stable policy and a robust ecosystem for EVs. Hybrid technologies are proving essential in bridging the gap to full electrification. I actually don't think hybrids are necessary at all, except in vehicles that tow, caravans, motorhomes, you know, basically pickup trucks. I can see why they might need to be hybrid. In fact, I don't really completely, but not every not every electric pickup truck can have a 200 kilowatt hour battery right now, which is what, you know, General Motors are doing to get 500 miles of range, which is impressive. But I can see how, you know, in that situation, an e-rev would make sense for some people. But outside of that scenario, I don't think there's any reason for this bridging technology. It's unnecessary. And I'm in Australia, guys. I mean, things are more isolated here than they are in other countries easily. We have to drive massive distances between cities. Our EV infrastructure is pretty terrible, but it's still good enough. For automakers, the uneven time timelines mean strategy can't be a one-size-fits-all. Success will depend on building flexible platforms, says the consultants, that can serve fast-moving markets like China and Europe while keeping slower adopters in North America engaged. Now, let's be real here, guys. The North American car market, 16 million car sales. That's big, yeah? Europe is around the same, 15 million, but China is 33 million. So if the Chinese um, car brands cover off China, which is not hybrids, it's primarily EVs, the future, and then they got a pretty good chance of going after China and going after Europe, plus they're going after Brazil and Mexico and also Thailand and Australia and Southeast Asia, Japan. I'd say that um, actually focusing on EVs is the primary focus of these companies, what they primarily should be doing. Um, this whole bridging the gap stuff, it's pretty much what companies say when they don't know what to do because their products are shit. That's what, that's what it is. Basically, what, when companies have a bad sales, a few months bad sales or six months, they panic and they go, oh shit, we better build bridging technologies. People don't want our cars. They don't actually say to themselves, okay, guys, let's put this on a spreadsheet. What are our rivals? Okay, our charging speed of our EVs, what is it? Oh, it's 100 kilowatt. Oh, our rivals are 500. Ah. Oh. Okay, the range of our EVs, how much is it? Oh, it's 400 kilometers. Oh, our rivals are 600 kilometers. Uh, and what's the price is the same. Oh, okay, maybe that's why they're not selling. What about the software? How good is our software? How good is the app that we our cars use? Uh, how good is our ADAS systems, our adaptive cruise, our automated cruise control systems? They don't do any of this. They just go, well, if this, EVs aren't selling. We're going to have to make plug-in hybrids. We're going to have to make hybrids. And in my opinion, it's more like an emotional knee-jerk reaction. If something doesn't succeed, it might not be because people don't want EVs. EV sales this year are up 27% worldwide. No other powertrain has done that. In the, not hybrids, not plug-in hybrids. They're not doing that. EVs are. So these kinds of consulting firms, I actually think they're kind of confusing people because the adoption of EVs will be much faster than what they're predicting. And the reason why is because when things hit a critical mass, when you, when you actually on that S curve of adoption scale, you start to hit a certain point and you go past the pivot point, that's when adoption happens much, much quicker. And when electric cars are cheaper on average than internal combustion, which they will be by 2030, and think about it, EV range is increasing every year. Battery warranties are increasing. Cadle's battery on their, their new batteries, it's, their warranty is 10 years. 
240,000 kilometers on the battery, yeah? Uh, but they're saying it'll last for a million miles. Uh, and the prices of those batteries continue to fall. The price of EVs continue to fall. The charging speed goes up every year. The what you're getting for your money goes up every year. You can't say that about internal combustion cars. They barely change every year. There's almost no difference between the value proposition of an, of an electric. There's almost no difference between the value proposition of an internal combustion car this year versus what there was 10 years ago. Very minimal difference. But EVs, the value proposition now versus 10 years ago is night and day. And if you look at the amount of money being invested into EV technologies, battery technology, there's no question by 2030, EVs will be cheaper and be a far better ownership proposition. And I think at that point in time, most people will recognize that. And they'll vote by buying the EVs that present the best tech at the best prices. It won't matter if you make millions of plug-in hybrids or millions of hybrids or millions of diesel cars. What will happen is customers will be buying the best products at the best price. Thanks for watching.